Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the IEEE EMBS webinar series on the frontiers of uh, biomedical imaging and analysis. Uh, my name is Ping Kun Yan. Uh, I'm an associate professor of uh, biomedical engineering at uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, I'm co-hosting this uh, webinar with uh, Drs. Ahmed Kaskin, Marlene De Bruni, Maria Stingraju. We are all part of the IEEE BIIP Technical Committee. So our guest speaker today is uh, Professor Ding Gangsheng. Um, I doubt I need to introduce uh, him uh, as he is so well known uh, in the area of uh, medical image analysis. Uh, but to follow the format and in case someone still doesn't know him yet, here's the uh, introduction. Um, Professor Ding Gangsheng is uh, right now the professor and a founding dean uh, with the School of Biomedical Engineering at the Shanghai Tech University. Uh, he's also a co-CEO uh, of United Imaging Intelligence uh, at Shanghai. Uh, he's a fellow of multiple uh, professional societies, including actually AMB, MBE, IAPR, and the Mikai Society. Before he returned to China, he was the uh, Jeffrey Haupt Distinguished Investigator and a full, uh, tenured full professor at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, he was directing the famous IDEA uh, Lab. Uh, his research interests include uh, medical image analysis, machine learning, deep learning, and computer vision. He was one of the pioneers in this field, introducing the deep learning to uh, medical image analysis. He has published more than uh, 1,500 peer-reviewed articles in the international journals and the conference, um, with an H index of 100, 122, and in total over 60,000 citations. Professor Shen also takes a leadership role in the scientific community. He serves as the uh, editor in chief for uh, Frontiers in Radiology, as well as the uh, associate editor for eight international journals. Also, he has served in the uh, board of directors of uh, Mikai Society. He was a, a general chair for Mikai 2019. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's welcome our speaker. Uh, thank, thank Ping Kun for invitation and also for introduction. So today, uh, the title for my talk is Deep Recon, basically try to use AI for medical image reconstruction. As Ping Kun mentioned, uh, I come from uh, BME school in Shanghai Tech University and also Shanghai United Imaging Intelligence. In today's talk, I'm going to cover these four different uh, uh, directions. So the main idea uh, for this talk is uh, image mapping. Uh, so firstly, I will introduce uh, what is image mapping. Image mapping is you try to transform one image in domain A to image in domain B. For example, uh, uh, MI image to the CT, and we can use uh, deep learning algorithm, and sometimes we say simply just as AI. So image mapping is try to, like I mentioned, try to map information in one domain to another domain. Of course, uh, if we talk about machine learning or deep learning, there's many applications in medical image area. The first one is like, for example, we can use uh, machine learning for auto positioning, and also we can check in the image quality. And this is like uh, during the reconstruction or after image acquisition, we need to do the image reconstruction. We can use the uh, machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm for fast MI, PET CT, low dose CT reconstruction, and also we can do MI PET attenuation correction. Of course, there are many, many applications after we acquire the image, we call the post-processing. You can do the organ segmentation and also you can do the lesion detection. In today's talk, I mainly focus on image reconstruction. Uh, as I mentioned for MI, PET CT, low dose CT, and the PET MI attenuation collection. For the AI-based image mapping, there are two methods. One is called the supervised learning. For supervised learning, you always have like a paired image in image reconstruction. For example, you have low dose pet and the stand dose pet. You try to use a deep learning algorithm to uh, reconstruct a standard dose pet image from the low dose pet image. Of course, there are many, many applications uh, we have to use unsupervised learning. For example, you don't have the uh, paired 
MI and the low PET image, and, and this is a attenuation collect PET. If you don't have this paired image in this way, you have to use, for example, most people already know like a cycle gain. I, I will introduce some details later. So first, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some uh, supervised learning method actually we did for the uh, image leak concentration. In particular, I'm going to talk about uh, three techniques. Uh, ASS is AI-based uh, com component sensor for MI uh, leak concentration. Data is a deep learning algorithm for the uh, CT, low CT leak concentration. And the hybrid DOI uh, actually is for the uh, pet, uh, fast pet leak contraction. So I will introduce one by one uh, in, my, in my talk. Firstly, I'm going to talk about ASS. And ASS, as I mentioned, it stands for AI Assistant Component Sensor. And this method is used for the MI fast deconstruction. And we know MI image actually, you know, there's a lot of advantage. For example, uh, we can have multiple conscious uh, uh, information for the soft tissue, and also we can acquire multi-direction images. Of course, uh, the drawback for the MI image is like uh, long scanning time, then you have to wait a long time for get MI image. For example, like even like in Shanghai, if you want to take MI images in the hospital, you may need to wait for a couple of weeks, for example, three weeks. So in this way, you know, we hope to basically develop a deep learning algorithm and then we can do the fast leak concentration. For example, in US, uh, Brain related study, we usually take like 30 minutes or 40 minutes to scan the uh, multiple modality MI image. And in China, for example, in the hospital, they basically simplify the imaging uh, particles, try to reduce the computation time from, for example, 30 minutes to 15 minutes or 12 minutes. Of course, you know, the quality will be reduced. In this talk, actually, we want to uh, do the fast MI image leak concentration, and we want to finish all the multimodality MI image particular for the brain image within a hundred seconds, means one minute and a, and a half, uh, uh, one and a half minute. So to do that, actually, uh, we are going to use AI assistant comparisons. Of course, you know, uh, many of us already know AI can predict, for example, uh, if you have the Undersampling information from the key space, and then you can use the AI algorithm using the historical data, and then you can reconstruct like a full sampling images. But if you just use AI, maybe you know this kind of algorithm will produce artifact for the reconstruction uh, uh, results. So in this case, we try to combine AI and the comparison. So of course, there are many studies say like AI for science, AI for, you know, a lot of uh, like study for math, for physics. And here, basically, we combine AI and the comparison. So, of course, you know, we know uh, AI, like I mentioned, can uh, reconstruct the image very fast. But, you know, we also, in the meanwhile, we want our algorithm to respect the physical property, for example, we have the coil, uh, multiple coil along the, uh, our brain. So we have to use the physical property uh, to do the image deconstruction. And this is very important. As I already mentioned, we use a complex sensor. Complex sensor use the image data uh, sparsity. Means, you know, if you cut a small feature from any part of this image, maybe you can find a similar one in the other part of the image. For example, in this way, like we can say, uh, data is sparse. But you know, if you just use the complex sensor, or we call the CS here, uh, it takes some time for optimization. Means you know you want to do uh, use the complex sensor and then reconstruct the image. Here, AI is used uh, as a very good initialization for complex sensor. Means you know uh, AI algorithm can provide you a uh, 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 good or very close to the uh, 
ground truth results, and then we input it to the compressions algorithm, and then compressions algorithm can faster do the optimization. So in this way, like uh, you combine the AI and this compressions together, eventually, for example, we training this algorithm in millions of the data. Actually, you know, we use the two million training samples and uh, also cover the whole body. For example, let's say from the head to to the foot, uh, like a foot, spine, abdominal area, hip, pelvis, knee, and also ankle. So whole body uh, MI imaging, uh, we use it to training our ACS AI based component sensor. So here I just basically give you very simple uh, framework. Of course, you know, right now we can use a more advanced uh, algorithm to do this even people like interested in the transformer or you know other uh, 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 algorithm uh, you can improve this kind of framework but the main idea here is for example if you acquire on the sample information in the case space and then you know you do some proper uh, processing for example inverse Fourier transformation going to the image space and then use a deep learning algorithm. And this is just one hour example. You can use a residual. And also, of course, you know, your output should have what data consistent means. Information from the image, if it just went to the key space, and it should be uh, close to the information I actually acquired in the key space. So this is the data consistency. And then you have the information, for example, using deep learning for the new information in the key space. And also you have the information from original uh, key space information you acquire. You combine these two information together and then you use a complex sensor. Eventually you can get, uh, for example, reconstruct in my image like this. So this is a very simple framework for AI assistant complex sensor. And as I mentioned, actually, you know, we use this method for uh, cover the whole body and then on all the, all the sequences and all the anatomies. And eventually, like I mentioned, we can acquire multi-modality image T2, T1, or, you know, flare image uh, for the head using 88 seconds. And we can have the high quality like this. And all those spine 99, and then the part spine 94, and the head 99. And also, for example, pelvis and the knee. So, so you can see from the uh, head to foot, and we can acquire multimodality image for each part of the human body within a hundred seconds. So, of course, also for the for the knee here. And of course, you know, on the other side, you will ask the questions where the data quality is still you know good enough. So we have to check uh, like whether we have high fidelity. And this is the images acquired using, for example, full sampling uh, uh, method in the case space, you have very clear images. And then we compare uh, AI assistant compression with the compression uh, with the compression uh, itself. And in each column here, for example, uh, we can have the speed uh, increase for 2.5 three or 3.5 or four times. And then we can see, for example, this is uh, like, you know, uh, images acquired using full sampling. And this is the uh, images uh, acquired, for example, two time, uh, 2.5 times faster using AI assistant compression. And, and this image, these two images, we can get their difference. So this is the difference. Uh, of course, if you compare this difference with the difference, this difference, you can see the less, less uh, residuals. And although with the increase of the speed, uh, of course, the residual will be, will, will be more. So here, we just want to show, show you uh, with this kind of like even four times uh, increase for the acquisition of the MI image, you still can retain uh, details. And also, you know, it's very important uh, if we can do the fast MI image, actually you can make like a physiological motion released. Uh, for example, you know, uh, in the left column, we can see the images using parallel image. In the middle, 
we can see the uh, images acquiring the AI assistant complexes. And you cannot see the vessel because of the physiological motion, actually the uh, vessel is a blur. If you can acquire image very fast, uh, like uh, uh, the algorithm we mentioned, you can see clearly even for the MI image, like all the vessels in the level. And also, you know, we can see from the table in the right, uh, and we can reduce uh, the scanning time for the abdominal area compared to the uh, parallel imaging. SS actually can uh, reduce the, the scanning time for 69 percent and also for the pelvis actually we can reduce uh, uh, the scanning time for 80 percent so this is like we can basically like uh, uh, freeze physiological motion like means you can also see the uh, like a uh, vessel details uh, very clearly and also we can have sometimes like a uh, uh, body motion for example uh, when you scan the uh, brain images, uh, actually we have the socile and the jealous here, and we, we're supposed to see very clear cortex, uh, like if we use the SSA system uh, complex sensor. But if, you know, with the body motions uh, and, uh, and you take like 110 uh, seconds and the SS take 32 seconds and you can uh, acquire the image faster and also you can uh, remove the uh, motions, particular body motion. This is uh, uh, another example. Actually, we installed, uh, we implemented this uh, ACS in the scanner, and we do the experiment uh, in Wuhan. Uh, basically, in one day, we use 15 hours, and we scanned 268 body parts, uh, 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 scans. So totally cover 10 different body parts. And in the average, actually, we just take 3.5 minutes, means you go into the uh, go into the table, scan, and then get off the uh, table. So in the average, just 3.5 minutes. And then in, within 15 days, you can scan 268 uh, uh, images. Yeah, so in this way, you can, of course, you can release the time for the physician, and also you can reduce the waiting time for a uh, patient. So this technique actually, you know, uh, we got uh, uh, FDA approved uh, in, in like uh, two years ago. So, so this is like May 5th, uh, 2020, and we got uh, uh, FDA, FDA approved for AI company sensor and used for the faster MI image acquisition. So I just, uh, talk about the very briefly for the uh, AI assistant competence uh, for faster MI image acquisition. And uh, here I'm going to talk about uh, the second application uh, for the image mapping algorithm or deep learning algorithm we call the DELT. DELT stands for deep learning trained algorithm. And we use this algorithm for low dose CT uh, reconstruction. So uh, it's very important, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we, help, we want to reduce the dose when we scan the CT image. Of course, if you use a regular uh, number of projection and uh, if you use a CT for the long nodule detections, you can see clearly, for example, for the nodule in the CT image. If you want to use a low dose, it means that you want, want to reduce the number of the projections, uh, maybe the nodules, you know, it's not clear in the low dose CT image. So we hope uh, we can still use uh, like a deep learning algorithm. We use a uh, uh, low dose and then we can still see, for example, the nodules uh, as we can see from the standard dose. So this is the main goal. And here in this slide, I, I just uh, provide you a very simple idea, for example, uh, for this algorithm. In the left, uh, I'm going to talk about the training procedure. In the right, I'm going to talk about uh, the testing procedure. In the training stage, actually, we use uh, simulated data. For example, we have simulated low dose, and also we have the corresponding target high dose, and then use a deep learning network. I'm talking about uh, very briefly in the slides next. And then you're training this kind of algorithm. Of course, your output from deep learning should be close to the uh, standard dose uh, pet image. So very brief uh, uh, ideas for the low dose CT reconstruction. In the application stage, and you will take a low dose CT image, means 
just uh, use a small number of projection for the uh, CD projection. And then input to the model already trained by in the training stage, then you can have a uh, leak country CT image. So this is a very simple uh, uh, framework for the deep learning the algorithm and the user for the uh, low dose CT leak contraction. So this is a, a very brief network design. Of course, uh, you know, you can use uh, a VNet uh, and although, you know, uh, you can have the scape connection, you can add, uh, you know, convolutional layer means, you know, information in the left, which is very different uh, uh, compared to the right. So you have to use a convolutional layer, make the information in the left similar to the right, then, then you can basically uh, Com, uh, borrow the information from the encoding uh, uh, part and, uh, and then you're decoding that. And also, you know, in the previously, of course, people right now, I think most people use, uh, we use a deeper supervision. We are not only want, you know, to use a low dosage images and encoding and decoding, and we want the output similar to the target in those images. And we hope this kind of, uh, Loss. We will also define, the, for example, the, uh, for example, the down sample image or for the down sample image it means you have the loss, uh, you know, in the different level. In this way, think about, uh, you know, if you define the loss, uh, do, uh, uh, loss in this layer, means you just need to train this part of the deep learning algorithm, and then the number of the parameter in this uh, deep learning algorithm. It is relatively small, so it's easy for you to train. After you training that, then you 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 basically, for example, uh, optimize this this loss. Then you just uh, you know training this part. Of course, you will fix this part uh, and you add this part. Uh, then you know your optimization is relatively simple. For example, using this way, you train your network, uh, and eventually you can simultaneously uh, optimize all the those in the different resolution together. So we apply this method uh, using uh, 10,000 case, and then uh, we, we, here we show the results for the abdominal uh, uh, image. Uh, in the light, you can see the uh, image, CT image for the standard dose, and in the left, this is a low dose uh, CT image. In the middle, uh, using our deep learning uh, training algorithm for the low dose, and you can see, for example, the uh, images. Actually, you know, you can keep uh, uh, some details uh, of using this uh, data algorithm, and this is for ab abdominal. And also, similarly, for the cardiac uh, image, if you use a low dose, you can see uh, lots of the noise over there. But if you use a, a data algorithm, you can see. Uh, relatively, uh, for example, uh, similarity uh, to the standard dose. Of course, this is just uh, for the visual comparison, and uh, we, we are going to give you some quantitative results later. And I come back to the original questions I mentioned. Uh, in the standard dose, you can see the nodule very clearly, and if you use a low dose, this you have a lot of artifact nodule H is not very clear, but use a data algorithm, means a deep learning trained algorithm, we can still see you know the nodules relatively clear uh, using this uh, uh, low dose reconstruction algorithm. And uh, quantitatively, actually, we use a, a, a phantom algorithm, a phantom, and we can statically say we can reduce the dose for. Uh, 50 to 80 percentage, and uh, also we can improve the uh, low conscious detectability for 57 to 157 percentage, and also we can reduce the loss over 70 percentage. So this is for the uh, uh, phantom data, and also you know uh, we basically uh, ask the senior radiologist in in US to review about 50 cases, and we compare different algorithms. For example, uh, in the abdominal area, we, we can see this purple one is for the standard dose, and the yellow one is our algorithm, and here is just for the uh, low dose. Uh, you can see, for example, in the head, for example, say uh, 
using deep learning algorithm like using low dose actually information uh, actually the quality is very similar uh, to using standard dose of course you know we ask uh, senior just uh, to score each image using these uh, five different uh, uh, scores I means one actually is unacceptable five is a, is the best or excellent so we have this kind of one to five score and so in in average like we have you know for example this is like a poor uh, over 4.5 and very important like for the cardiac image actually you move very very fast and using deep learning algorithm for the visual uh, checking actually physicians uh, think the deep delta uh, algorithm actually output a better image like uh, 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 scoring for compared to the standard dose. Uh, maybe one of the reasons is uh, like a cardiac image, uh, image of course move faster if you can uh, have the low dose and all the fast acquisition then, then the artifact from the motion can be can be uh, reduced. So this technique actually although uh, we get uh, FDA approved uh, for the uh, uh, about uh, yeah just about uh, two years ago actually you know uh, this is a uh, 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 low dose CT reconstruction using deep learning trained algorithm and we call the data algorithm. So I mentioned the application of the deep learning for fast MI image acquisition and also for low dose CT acquisition and then now I'm going to talk about uh, hyper DOI. HyperDI stands for the Hyper Deep Learning Reconstruction Algorithm for fast PET uh, image uh, reconstruction. So, as uh, we already know, for example, uh, before acqu acquire uh, PET images, we usually have to inject uh, like a contrast engine. But you know, it's very important if you can acquire. Uh, the image faster, you can even see how this uh, country engine going through one part of when you inject and then how this country engine going through uh, a different part of the body. So this is the image actually acquired using a whole body PET CT image. PET image, of course, you know, it's very useful, particular for the like uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease detection and also for the cancer. Uh, detection. But you know, uh, using the PET image, we usually have the high radiation dose and sometimes the scanning time is also long. So we we want, for example, to reduce the scanning uh, time, let's say from three minutes to one minute. But in this way, we can see we have a lot of artifact. And also sometimes we can see if we input speed like uh, 10 times, uh, from 15 minutes to 1.5 minutes for the whole body image and we start to see some artifacts in the uh, reconstructed PET images. So again, we want to use a deep learning algorithm to uh, improve the uh, PET image uh, reconstruction. Actually, you know, here I'm just talking about uh, fast PET image reconstruction. Actually, we already did a lot of uh, uh, study and also the the, the, the implementation for the low dose means you just reduce the amount of the uh, conscious agent and you can still can have a high quality PET image. So this is a framework for the reconstruction. Of course, uh, we have the pre-processing like normalization, random you know, correction. And the most important part is, is the hyper DOI algorithm I'm going to talk about later it means you have the uh, PET image and how you can reconstruct the uh, uh, standard, standard PET image and you can reduce the uh, reconstruction time. So here, for example, uh, again, uh, we use a training and in the, in the training stage, we have the paired uh, uh, image for low dose PET and also target PET images. This is like a standard dose PET image. And we do some normalizations and then uh, using deep learning algorithm, I'm going to talk about in the next slides. And then output uh, after normalization should be similar to the, to the uh, uh, standard dose PET image. So this is for the training stage. In the testing stage, again, you know, we can acquire low dose PET image and we do the similar 
normalization as we did for the training. Then we use a model we already trained, already trained in the training stage, and then we can output, for example, uh, standard uh, PET image or, or standard PET images. Uh, so this is uh, like a framework. So this is a, a network design. Originally, uh, we use uh, a high link residual unit. As you can see, you know, unit usually like you have encoding, then you have decoding. For example, you have the low dose pet image, and then your output is a stand dose pet image or standard pet image. So here, basically, uh, for example, encoding in this way, but for each encoding, we 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 downsample image or we we using like a similar like a skip uh, connection, but you know we can also upper sample into that. Of course, this is very complex. You know, for each part uh, you have down sample and also have upper sample. And uh, right now we have the uh, network learning algorithm. Maybe you know some connection is not necessary, and this can be also applied uh, to this kind of application. But using this network, uh, we trained. Uh, um, three, over 300 pairs of the images, and then uh, we, 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 we have the results, for example, we show uh, here in the light, and we call ground truth actually is uh, like a standard pet image using standard uh, scan time, and uh, we compare this uh, uh, results with the three different methods, one is the unit, residual unit, and also our algorithm called a high uh, link residual unit. We can compare, for example, the uh, uh, pet information in the circled green area. And if you compare this this one with the one from the unit, you can see you know much uh, 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 blur over there. But if you compare with the results using our algorithm, and you can see very relatively visually, of course, they are very similar. I'm also going to uh, show you some quantitative results uh, later. So this is another application. Uh, for example, in the light, uh, we're using two minutes to scan the whole body image. If we just reduce to one minute, uh, and you can see uh, lots of the noise over there. But if we use a hybrid DOI, still using one minute, uh, and the quality is relatively similar. And uh, and here is a whole body uh, image, for example, on on the light, you can see uh, we use it 15 minutes to get a whole body PET scan. And in the left, actually, you know, we just using 1.5 minutes. Of course, you can see a lot of noise and also artifacts uh, if we use a regular uh, reconstruction algorithm. But if we use a high DOI algorithm, still using 1.5 minutes, actually, you know, the results is, is very closely uh, to to the result using, for example, 15 minutes. Of course, here is just for the uh, visual comparison. And here, I'm going to provide you some quantitative results. And in the uh, upper panel, uh, this is a PET images using regular reconstruction algorithm. In the bottom, actually using our high DR deep learning algorithm. For each bed, for example, we take 40 seconds, and this is the image, you know, comparison uh, uh, visually. And uh, in the table, we can see, for example, uh, this uh, two column is for the results using regular reconstruction, and this bottom two rows actually uh, results using hybrid DOI. And uh, we, for example, use uh, for the liver and also for the lesions uh, uh, we comp the SUV, SUV uh, mean. First, let's see the liver uh, standard to uh, 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 signal to noise ratio, SNI. For example, if we're using a uh, method without deep learning, actually we have like a point A, but if we use the uh, deep learning algorithm, we can increase the SNI from 5.8 to 10.5. And this is the result for each bet we take 40 seconds. Of course, we can take you know uh, more times for each bet, like uh, 60 seconds, 120, and 150. Quality will be improved. And also then we can see without deep learning algorithm, if we increase the scanning time for each bet, of course, 
SNI also increased from 7, 9, 11. But if we're using deep learning algorithm, actually, you know, 13 better than 7, 15 better than 9, and also 17 better than 11. So you can still see, you know, using deep learning algorithm, actually, you can, for example, reduce the scanning time like 20, 70 percentage, and also you can improve the image uh, uh, signal to noise ratio or SNR by 50 to 100 percent. And here is just the individual, you know, result for for each bed using different uh, scanning time. And again, we also ask uh, uh, senior uh, physicians uh, in in Zhongshan Hospital in Shanghai uh, to review uh, about 50 uh, images. And also, again, we ask them, ask uh, uh, radiologists uh, or physician to give the score from five to uh, one to five, five is the best. And again, uh, the left, the light one is uh, uh, scoring results using standard uh, dose. And, uh, and here we compare the results with the four different methods, like low dose without any, you know, like a, 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 a filtering or deep learning based algorithm. And here is just a different filtering algorithm. And this is a result for the hyper DOI. And now, of course, because you use a deep learning algorithm and you have the convolutional kernel and sometimes actually, you know, the image um, uh, appearance actually uh, to the physician, sometimes the scoring is better than the standard dose. So this is just uh, for the uh, uh, measuring results or you know, visual measuring results from the physician. And so this tech technique is also actually we got FDA approved uh, uh, about two years ago. Uh, so in in the uh, maybe like uh, over 30 minutes, I talk about uh, supervisor learning and supervisor learning for fast MI image acquisition, low dose CT acquisition, and also fast PET acquisition. And next, I'm going to talk about uh, unsupervised learning. And here, particularly, we apply this method for PET MI attenuation correction. We know using PET MI image, we can acquire the PET image before collection. We can call this the low PET image. In the meanwhile, also we acquire the MI image. So we hope, of course, you know, if we want to do the attenuation collection for this low PET, we have to use the CT images because CT can provide a density for each part of the human body. And then this information can be used to do the uh, PET attenuation collection. Then you can get uh, PET images after collection. So the issues here is when we have the PET MI image, how can we synthesize the CT image from the MI image? And then this synthetic CT image can be used for uh, attenuation collection. So this is the main idea. But the issue here is that when uh, we usually do not have paired CT image and, and MI image. And also, you know, when you scan the uh, CT image and the PET image, and you can see the Bed ship is also different. For, for CT, you have, have this kind of banded table, and for the MI image, you have flat table. So they have different shapes of the table for the MI image and also CT image. Of course, if you cut each part of this body, they are corresponding. The shape can be also, you know, very different across, you know, a body from, from the head, uh, to the foot, they are very different, it means uh, larger variations. And uh, we don't have the paired image. Uh, so one way to do that is using cycle gain. I think uh, people already know uh, very well. So for the cycle uh, uh, gain means, you know, MI to the pad, uh, MI to the CT and the CT come back to the MI, they should be similar. Similarly, uh, for the, for example, CT, uh, transform to the MI and then going back to the CT domain, then this should be also consistent. So this is like a cycle consistency. But you know, if it just simply use a uh, cycle, cycle consistent, for example, this is the original MI image, and this is a cycle consistent, uh, you know, MI image means, you know, like MI to CT, then come back to the MI image. So come back one is this one. 
and there's a one you know original one is this one but when you transform to the ct domain like here the ship can be you know different compared to the original mi image and also the transformed you know uh, uh, mi image coming back so it means you know the ship they are not necessarily the same. So this is the issues for the cycle gain, just using cycle consistency. So to overcome these issues, actually we use uh, two different laws. One is we call the structure similarity. Means the ship, for example, if we have the MI image and the transform to the CT image, the ship should be very similar. So this is a structure similarity. And although, although you know, their their ship should be consistent means you know uh the the their overload ship you know should be consistent so we use uh, like you know uh, two kind of information a uh, strict similarity is like you know you want structure in the mi image and the structure in the ct they should be similar so we use a mutual information mi stand for the mutual information and here sc uh, ship ship consistency. So we use these two different kind of uh, loss function. By use this, actually, you can see if we use a mutual information plus the ship consistent, MI image going to the CT, CT come back to the MI image. So these three images are very similar without using these two loss functions as we already mentioned before. So this this image actually you don't have any constraints in the CT domain. They are not necessarily ship similar to the original MI images. So here is a more comparison for the different part, for example, abdomen, pelvis, and also law, uh, extreme area. So you can see if we're using mutual information and the ship consistent, so this uh, image, CT image, is very, uh, oh, sorry, this, this is, a, is a, yeah, this CT image is very similar to the, to the, to the MI image, okay? So if without using, uh, mutual information plus the ship, you can see some difference like, you know, you know, here, okay, you have ship also, also are very different. And then this slide just give you some quantitative results. For example, using cycle game, and you can have reconstruct uh, 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 images compared with the original one, and uh, this is a, a difference map. So we can have this kind of difference map for the pelvic bone, lung, spine, and a different uh, like a femur bone, for example. If you use this uh, uh, method just using cycle game, as you can see, for example, uh, the the uh, uh, the the errors, for example, like uh, uh, over hundred. But if we add the mutual information, then you reduce and further added. And you can reduce, for example, uh, from 100 to, to 70. And also SNR, for example, you know, uh, you can also improve. Of course, you know, you can see clearly for the uh, difference map, you, you can see less lead and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and blue here. For example, blue and the lead, like means, you know, uh, compared to the, to the original images, you have more differences. So here, just to demonstrate to you, you know, using uh, mutual information plus the ship conscious in the cycle gain, actually you can produce a better result. So I just mentioned the uh, method, for example, supervised learning, I mentioned for the three method for the MI, CT, and the PET, and also unsupervised learning, actually for the PET MI, for the PET attenuation collection. And here I just summarize uh, for my my talk. Uh, 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 basically, for example, basically this. Uh, so so this is a, like a, a different application. This is the slides I just want to make a, a, a discussion and also conclusion for my talk. I, I just mentioned some application for the deep learning uh, in the image reconstruction. I gave some example for the MI images, CT, and also uh, PET, and also unsupervised learning for the PET MI attenuation collections. Of course, there are many, many applications, you know, for cross modality HMI to CT, and, uh, and also with the improve of the image quality for the PET images. Sometimes you can even estimate, uh, you know, uh, CT information from the PET image. So in the future, maybe, you know, uh, you just uh, use a PET and then you still can do the uh, PET attenuation collection. 
And uh, for the future, uh, we can apply deep learning for for more uh, uh, complex applications. So for example, uh, diffusion tensor imaging, and also you know can can reduce, uh, for example, the contrast for the pattern, and also for the for the other modality. And even if you can improve the acquisition time, and also I already demonstrated that you can, uh, for example, uh, remove or you can reduce the motion motion uh, artifact. And sometimes, of course, you can also do the uh, motion correction. So this is uh, uh, all the talk uh, or information in, in, in my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shen. Um, yeah, it's thank you for the excellent talk. It's very, very impressive to see that um, not only actually you develop methods, these methods have been integrated into uh, commercial products and have been uh, cleared by uh, FDA. Um, so we can see actually it's uh, in the uh, practice. Um, that, that's very impressive. Um, I think we got uh, already a couple of questions in the uh, chat window. Uh, if you uh, have questions, you can either tap into the chat window or uh, just raise your hand. Uh, we can uh, enable you to talk. Um, so maybe we can actually first answer the uh, quickly answer the uh, uh, questions in the chat window. So the first question uh, for cardiac ad abdomen uh, CT reconstruction, why is it uh, better than the standard dose? Uh, what's the insight behind this? Um, the uh, person also asked if there's a publication for this. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, one way is like, uh, you know, because uh, you reduce the number of the projection, I think the acquisition time and also reduce right so 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 this in this way maybe you know uh, uh motion artifact from the acquired image also can be less this this is maybe one of the reasons and uh, and uh, and uh, uh yeah so i think this is one of the reasons of course there are many other reasons yeah okay thank you um, next question is uh, for uh, cardiac uh, MRI. Is there any contribution on hyper DLR? Uh, any publications on that? Uh, actually, you know, uh, we are writing the paper. All the, all the, you know, uh, basically the uh, uh, algorithm and all the applications. So we are writing the paper. Yeah. And okay. then Lino, actually, we, we only have the conference paper. Uh, no general paper yet, you know, okay. for, for the, for the, for the method and also the product we mentioned, but of course we do have many other papers in the, in, in the, you know, published from the university. Okay. All right. The next question, um, for the quantitative uh, results, um, do we have the pair data, uh, after registration, uh, for a reader study, I think it actually refers to one of the reader study. Uh, for the um, reader scoring, yes, uh, like I mentioned, you know, you always have the uh, standard dose image, or you have, for example, you know, original Im like we we call it like a golden standard. It's like you know, without uh, or you for the MI for the CT image, you like you have the standard dose CT, and also for the PET image, for example, using you know the original scanning time. So you you, you have the comparison, yes. Okay, great. Um, so the uh, uh, Jan Gan uh, asked that uh, could you share more details about how you pre -pre processed MRI data? That's regarding the first work ACS. Uh, processing the MRI, MRI data. So MRI data, you know, for example, you acquire the images uh, from the key space, uh, and then you know, uh, uh, like I mentioned. One way is like you know you use the inverse Fourier transformation mapping to the image domain, and then in the image domain we use a deep learning algorithm, and then this information also going come back to the key space, and then using complex sensor. Of course, you know right now this is like a one way. Of course, you know you can use a, like a dual domain. For example, information from the image domain you can also going back to the uh, key space, and sometimes for example. A lot of methods like a dual domain algorithm, and you can use uh, improve the image quality also in the key spaces before you 
those inverse the uh, uh, Fourier transformation to the image space, uh, actually you, you have another deep learning algorithm try to uh, complete information in the key space, and then you you mapping to the image domain, and then using another deep learning algorithm. So basically, like you know, dual domain, you know, optimization. And of course, the main idea over there is like we just we are not only rely on the deep learning algorithm, and also we integrate with the complexness, and we assume if we use a deep learning algorithm, and we did we did see you know the results like you sometimes you make some artifact or uh, uh, from the reconstructed image, but we we assume using complexness with a very good uh, like uh, uh, mathematical formulations and also constraints, you can reduce uh, uh, artifact, for example, introduced by the deep learning algorithm. So this is the main idea. Of course, there's other ways we also, you know, uh, try to, to do, for example, uh, whether, you know, AI for Compare sensor or compare sensor also you know can help AI. So 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 this is also you know a different kind of uh, research. Basically you know you rely on the compare sensor result, then AI result will be used for the initialization. Another way is like you know you can do for example you rely on the uh, AI algorithm and then AI output will be the final result. There's a different kind of you know. Uh, uh, method that people use even for the product people use it different ways yeah but i i assume you know there's advantage for each of this method maybe integration like even the dual domain and all those dual ways maybe the result will be better yeah okay all right thank you um i'd like to uh give the uh panelist uh professor jiwan uh, um time to ask questions Oh, okay. I see there are still some remaining questions in the chat. And since you gave me the opportunity, let me first congratulate Grace Tillman and uh, Professor Sen and presented. That's wonderful. Uh, one question. So in your uh, MRI reconstruction, you utilize the complex sensing. And in your PET nuclear reconstruction, you didn't use uh, CS-based constraint. And do you think uh, CS-based uh, constraint or reconstruction method could be applied in any imaging modality you covered? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Professor Wang, I think this is a very, very good question. And uh, actually, you know, right now we are, uh, uh, we have results actually you know we also you know using the same strategy for mi image for ct image and also for pet image but you know for you know product development in this stage like actually two years ago just for the mi image actually you are right you know we, because all this like a projection reconstruction actually you can use this kind of uh, 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 strategies for different applications Okay, so uh, Ping Kun, and I see uh, other questions in the chat, so please uh, help handle. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I see actually uh, <clears throat> Xiang uh, typed a long question uh, in the chat window. I, I just enable him so that he can just uh, ask the, the, the question. Okay, Xiang, you are unmuted. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Professor Xiang uh, and Professor Yan. And Professor Wang, uh, uh, excuse me, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, 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 thanks for the great talk about the deep learning based image uh, reconstruction. Uh, I just have a simple question regarding the uh, reconstructed the use of the reconstructed image in the downstream clinical task. Uh, for example, we we may need this uh, reconstructed image to be used for the disease diagnosis or the surgical planning. Uh, uh, my question is that uh, in current stage of the research, is there any risk that the uh, deep learning algorithm may induce some kind of fake objects or miss some uh, small objects in the reconstructed image? Thank you. Yes. Theoretically, theoretically, yes. And although, you know, uh, where all the algorithm develop, we know, you know, uh, originally or previous uh, algorithm for reconstruction, although like, you know, iterative optimization algorithm, just a one way, you know, of course you have more constraints, but we cannot say, you know, there's no any 
problem from previous method. So similarly, deep learning algorithm, you know, maybe you have more, you know, uh, unknown problem, but you know, uh, in our case, actually the, the method or, you know, the result I showed is not only for research, actually, like I mentioned, we, we got FDA approved and we already implement uh, this algorithm and installed it in the scanner. And the scanner is already used, uh, you know, in, in US and also in, in China, particularly in China, like I mentioned for the fast MI image acquisition, I give one example, uh, 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 actually in 15 hours, we scanned 268 scans and cover uh, 10 organs and each scan actually like 3.5 minutes. Of course, you know, you can say, maybe, you know, current deep learning algorithm is not enough, you know, to cover all the, you know, like a case, for example, very small region. But like, if you remember, I did mention that we use, you know, 2 million images for training our algorithm. And we use a large set of the data and also, of course, all this technique and we have the clinical trial. Clinical trial means, you know, uh, we scan some subject, subject or, you know, the, some controlled subject using different method, and then ask a physician to do the diagnosis, whether, for example, their diagnosis uh, result is similar or not. So this is uh, like a clinical trial, and we do all this clinical trial when we apply for FDA and or when we implement uh, technique in the scanner and then use it in the hospital. Of course, you, I agree, it always has the issues. Uh, technique is improved and we hope, you know, some issues uh, we, we, we think it may help can overcome in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, I see actually Dr. Mohammed Tahir uh, raise his hand. I will, uh, I'm gonna unmute him. Okay, Dr. Mohammed, uh, you can go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I want to ask that how many images are basically enough for machine learning or deep learning, especially in the context of medical image processing? Yeah. And the this second question. Very... And second yeah. question I want to ask: Can image vision play an important role in better understanding of medical image? Yes, this is always a very good question. So, you know, people always ask, but you know, my my answer always like that. This really depends on the application or different part of the organ. Like it depends on the modality. Depends on you know same modality in the different part of the human body. You know, if the you know the information in some part of the human body is relatively simple, then the number of training sample can be less. If it's very complex, of course you can you have to have more. And although in the academic area, you know, we always, uh, uh, for example, study like a small sample uh, problem. And we want to use, uh, for example, small number of the samples, then we can uh, uh, train your algorithm and we hope this algorithm is still, you know, very effective. Uh, but in, this is a very good way. And of course, in the future, we can reduce the number of the training sample. But I, I always, you know, have the feeling uh, because uh, sometimes, just like uh, one of the uh, uh, audience just mentioned, uh, some small regions, you know, if you just uh, use a small number of the training sample, you do not see those kind of, you know, regions over there. So, so your algorithm will be not effective. So, I think, you know, in the academic, we want to uh, basically study the algorithm, for example, using small number of training sample. But in in the in practice, we still want to acquire different kind of typical image. Only in that way, we can cover, you know, different case. Otherwise, we always afraid, you know, in the future, maybe algorithm is not working for the, you know, very rare case, okay? You, you never, your algorithm ne ne never saw before. Thank you. So yeah, uh, one last question, we will have to uh, let it, our speaker go. Um, so if we don't have a ground truth images, the question from uh, Taiwan, what is the best way to uh, evaluate the quality of the reconstructed images? Uh, you know, 
you know, this is like uh, all the, the, the questions people always, uh, you know, ask and uh, not only for reconstruction and also for, let's say, you know, image annotation, image registration, and, uh, and we always like using, you know, some strategy. One is a simulation, okay? You can control, you can use a physical model of phantom or you can use a, a mathematical phantom. So another way is like uh, using, for example, physician because eventually, you know, uh, you want uh, physicians to see the images. So, so you ask, uh, you know, like a physician to evaluate uh, the quality or, you know, for the disease diagnosis, so whether, you know, your, 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 your method is, is good enough. Okay. So in that case, you don't have any ground truth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much um, again uh, for the uh, wonderful uh, talk. We have to conclude here. Uh, thank you all for attending the uh, seminar. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.